Um, it's uh, proud of our group, proud of our fight at the end. Um, it's um, it was a uh, hard fought game against two good teams. Uh, I think Ohio State had two of the elite playmakers, um, not just our league, but college basketball um, and, and hard shot makers. Uh, but, um, you know, as, as, as we always do, you know, this league is loaded with, with great teams and really good players. Uh, we just saw two of them, and now we, we get to move to Michigan and we get a couple more. And uh, so it's, um, it's not time to hang your head. It's time to move on. And, um, you know, we, we uh, last game with Michigan, obviously Hunter didn't play. Uh, he's one of the elite players in this league. Uh, so it's, uh, you can really kind of scrap a little bit of the, uh, uh, what we saw in the last game. But, um, uh, you know, they're shooting the ball better. Uh, Houston's playing better. Uh, you know, they're, they're a team that is, is, is very lethal in transition. Uh, they get a lot of threes in transition. We got to be dialed in and take that away and, um, you know, and then, and then make them guard us. And, uh, you know, they're playing a lot more zone. They're pressing some, uh, now they did not do that with Phil, uh, in their last game against Rutgers. But, uh, again, we've got to be, uh, we've got to be, we got to be dialed into all the little things. And, and that's what I'm stressing with our group. This thing's about the little things. It's about communication. It's about talking. It's about charges. It's about setting great screens. Uh, it's about playing harder. Uh, it's, it's uh, uh, you know, it's, 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 it's all the little things. And, uh, you know, you, you handle the little things and, and a lot of other positive things will happen. So on to Michigan and uh, expect a hard-fought game on, uh, on national television. We'll see what it looks like. Good morning, Coach. Uh, could you talk a little bit about the matchup between uh, Kofi and Hunter Dickinson? That, that's going to be um, uh, one of the big storylines. Seems like two players with two different styles of play. Yeah, you know, I, I think the one thing that, uh, that that Hunter's done is is um, uh, you know he's playing a lot more maybe because of personnel uh, away from the basket. That's not to say he's not gifted. He's a very very gifted. He's got elite hands. Uh, you know, he's he's got uh, uh, you know, he's, he's, he's got the ability to pick and pop. Uh, and, but where he really hurts you is not necessarily just shooting it out there, but, uh, but passing it, uh, Diabate back into, uh, uh, into play now, uh, gives them a lot of size up front. And, and he's a, he's a guy that, uh, uh, allows Hunter to play outside. So, you know, I would expect them to try to draw Kofi away from the rim a little bit. Um, you know, it's, uh, it'll be a, uh, hard fought battle between those two as they, as, as it was last year. What else uh, can you tell us about Michigan and some of the keys for your, for your team defensively? Yeah, we've got a guard, we've got a takeaway transition. You know, they're very, very good in transition and, and you've got Brooks playing at a very high level, averaging 14, 15 a game here over the last five or six games. Uh, you know, he's a guy that never comes off the floor for them. He's their version of Trent. Uh, you know, he's, he's, he makes shots, they run action to him. And then Caleb Houston is, is a guy that, um, you know, had five threes in their last game. Um, he, he's, uh, you know, he's, he's, he's playing at the speed, uh, of a college, of a college game now, where maybe he wasn't, and he's more acclimated to it. He's running really hard. He's, uh, he's doing a lot of positive things for them. So, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's a big part of it. And then you've got to handle their, their changing defenses when they throw that at you. Thanks, Coach. Brad, I know you said that you implemented coordinators in the preseason with your assistants, and that's why it worked out as well when you got ejected. But was there a – is it safe to assume that maybe like a COVID protocol was put in place to where if you got popped and you weren't even be able to be out on the bench, that's – that's kind of what allowed the same seamless transition to happen when you got ejected Thursday night. Yeah, maybe I, you know, I think the one thing that's, you know, it, I, our coaches coach now, and I mean, they're not just figureheads. They're not just guys that go stand at, you know, um, to, you know, that, that come stand and practice and don't get involved. These guys, these guys know every aspect of, of, of what's going on. We meet daily. 
um, you know, we're, we're dialed in on specific sides and, and um, you know, that's, that's helped us a great deal. I feel great about where that's uh, gotten our program. Um, you know, it was a change we made. I like it. And uh, again, so I think it helps, you know, Chester be, be really focused on what the other teams are doing offensively. He's, you know, he, he makes a lot of changes for us there as does, as does Jeff on the offensive side. And, and uh, you know, so it's, uh, there's a lot of suggestions there and those guys are, are, are great at what they do. Thanks. Thanks, Brad. Appreciate it. Hey coach, in the past you've spoken a lot about how much you like transfers to be able to like come in and sit out and learn the philosophy of the program and everything. But Alfonso didn't have that opportunity and still had a lot of success. What do you think has allowed him to be so successful? Well, he's a terrific, terrific, terrific young guy. I mean, he is a high, high character kid. Uh, he works extremely hard. Um, you know, he, his, his, um, his work ethic has allowed him to fit right in. Uh, you know, and, and it's not, you know, it's not, it's not as easy as he's made it look, um, you know, just learning different language, uh, different teammates, different, you know, he's excelling in the classroom at a, at a high level in, in grad school. I mean, he is, uh, you know, he's very, very well-rounded and, uh, you know, if you're not that it gets pretty hard to be successful, but, you know, his work ethic allows him to his. You know, he's got tremendous, um, uh, you know, give a damn factor, you know, in everything he does, not just not just basketball, but but school. And, uh, you know, so there's there's an internal. Drive there that 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 he has that's allowed for a lot of that. You obviously talk a lot about the need to get in the gym and do extra work, whatever. But when Alfonso is in the transfer portal, you're scouting any of these guys in the transfer portal. How do you, I guess, estimate or gauge whether or not they're going to be hard, hard enough workers for your program and they're going to fit in in that area? Yeah, I mean, when you make phone calls and, and then you dig deep, uh, you find out. And, uh, you know, it, it, we obviously had some connections in, and through his Puerto Rican ties and uh, you, you dig into those, you find out what he's about, you uh, you know, the shortcomings, you know, the, the, the strengths and, uh, you know, you just, you make a determination on, on whether those positives are, are, are more than the shortcomings, knowing you're only going to have them a year. And, uh, you know, the biggest challenge is how much can you change and mold guys in a year? It's the, that's the hardest thing to do. That's why transfers, you know, one year transfers are, are having the success he's had you commend him because it's really, really hard to do. Hey, Brad, what are the, I guess, challenges and a new a new coach, but a temporary coach at Michigan compared to what you saw earlier? What do they do different with Phil than they did with Juwan? And how do you guys approach that? Well, I, you know, I think we'll find out as we continue to go. The, the first game was, uh, they were pretty limited. You know, you get two guys that are that, that were out that didn't play. Uh, you know, he didn't play as much. He, you know, those you start looking at those guys' minutes, and I mean, they were all thirty-five to forty minutes, pretty close. You know, there wasn't a lot of uh, you know a lot of change going on. You know, they did what they do offensively. You're not going to reinvent the wheel. Um, Phil's one of the most successful coaches in the history of the game, so uh, you know that's just that's that's not like he hasn't slid over and been in that seat before, you know, he's, he's been there for, for a whole bunch of games. So, uh, you know, how, how, you know, the two guys coming back uh, impact what they do. I don't know. We'll find out. It's, it's kind of a, it's kind of a crap shoot, but the, you know, the biggest change is they didn't play zone and they've been playing a good amount of zone uh, in the, in, in some previous games. And then do you have a timeline on RJ's recovery and what, what are the challenges for a freshman who was really starting to get his feet wet and find his groove. And, and now he's got to pause for however long. I don't have a timeline. Uh, he'll meet on Monday. I know that back with the, with the doctor in terms of, you know, what his, uh, what his mobility was, what his mobility is able to start getting back to in terms of, of, uh, you know, when you have, the procedure done on your 
you know, in your, in your stomach area, in your abdomen, you know, you're not going to try to rush every, you know, anything there. Is, but he's, uh, he'll meet, uh, he'll meet early next week. We hope we can start getting him moving again and see what that looks like. And, uh, you know, I, I don't have a timeline, but yeah, it's not easy. I mean, you know, I, it was, it was, it was, it was his time. It was his time to, 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 to really start to be an impactful player. And, uh, you know, I made that comment, uh, you know, before the, you know, before the Michigan State game, I just felt like he was ready to, to be thrust into a, a little bit different role with some different expectations and, and was excited about getting him, uh, getting him going here as we, as we head down the stretch of the season and the Big Ten tournament. Um, but obviously you get sidetracked a little bit and, uh, uh, you know, that expectation is not going to change. Uh, you know, we'll see how he comes back and, and go from there. Thanks, Brad. Brett, does your relationship with Kofi allow you to be harder on him in a sense? He said he wants that from from you guys. What do you have? Is that kind of like IO, where, where you can be harder on him as, after a game where he goes for twelve and three? Yeah, very much. Um, you you can't have a, a very good program, in my opinion, if you can't coach your best players, and you can't de you can't demand more from them, and. Uh, uh, you know that it's been that it's been that way with Trent. It's been that way with, with with Io. Um, you, you know, I make I've, I'm a guy that puts really unrealistic expectations on those guys, and and demand more from them than they probably demand from themselves. Um, but for me, that's what keeps pushing them to be better than they think they can be. So uh, I coach Kofi hard. I coached Io hard. Um, and, uh, you know, great players are never going to truly be great players unless they can accept coaching and deal with it. And otherwise, they, they slide back into just being a, a, a pretty mediocre player uh, if, they don't, if, they don't, if they don't take coaching. That's my opinion. Yeah, Ben's still in the protocol as well, Brad? He is. Thanks. Hey Brad, you mentioned Thursday night just about how sometimes the offense has been Kofi overload and you're trying to get more guys into actions. Just how do you strike that balance though where you obviously want to get the ball to, you know, national player of the year candidate, but you know, maybe that's not always going to be, you know, the option. You know, it, I mean it's it's some of our best some of our best offensive sequence has been, you know, obviously with 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 Plummer and Trent going. You can think back to different games this year. Uh, you know, the, the, the challenge is, you know, in, a, in Ohio State's case, some of the defensive stuff that they did, you know, to Plummer in the second half, taking some of that stuff away. Um, you know, it's, it's and that's, again, why you've got to have multiple options. But we saw Jake step up. You know, you score, I don't know, 83 points or whatever. That should be enough to win. Um, you know, and Kofi missed nine layups. So, you know, you, he makes half those and you're you're – you're in a different perspective, but again, it's, it's, we're, we're still trying to find that right balance. And I say that right balance, it's not to eliminate the, that, that dry spell. What, what creates that? And it's missed shots. It's a couple turnovers. It's missed free throw. You know, we got a chance to go up nine and Coleman misses a front end of a one-on-one. Uh, you know, we've, we had DeMonte's flagrant foul takes a possession away. You know, all those things become momentum killers and, uh, you know, you've got to, you've got to eliminate those and, uh, and you got to make those plays. I guess maybe how much of it is just the fact that it's late February and teams have had a season worth of film to scout and maybe it just, is it tougher to run offense now? It's maybe in the big 10, especially. Uh, every game's its own identity. I mean, you guys not like any of the shots Kofi got the first half. I mean, my goodness, those, those are the same shots he's been, He's he's made. I think you know we 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 got you know Plummer made eight threes. I think we got him the shots you know that that we felt good about. I thought Trent turned a few down. Um, you know I like we we played some five out late. Um, you know midway through the second half, I love that with Coleman and and, and some of those actions. Uh, and we got great looks and truly the uh, you know the only stop that they made late was the non foul call on Trent at the end of the game where he gets put on his head 
And that was their only, that was their only stop. So I think offense has been, we're getting the right shots. I've, I've, I've really believed that. Yeah. Thank you. Hey coach, you mentioned wanting Trent to be more aggressive. Um, what do you want that to look like in, in terms of his approach? And then is it trying to run more stuff to get him going early? Or is it, I, I know you said that he's maybe turned down some looks as well. I, I lost on the back half of that, Derek. I know you said that you wanted to get Trent going. Is, is that maybe trying to run some stuff to get him going earlier? I know you also mentioned he's turned down some looks, so it's just a matter of taking those. Yeah, I just want him to take them. I, I want Trent. I want Trent Thirsty to score, and and when he's when he's that way, Trent is the ultimate team guy. He's trying to do. He's he knew we had Plummer going the other night. He's running offense to get it to get Plummer going. He's making great passes to Kofi, um, and yet they went under him twice uh, on a, on a ball screen. He's got to shoot those shots, and uh, you know we don't need to be saved by Trent. Uh, in the last six minutes, and that's the only time he's looking to score. We need that. He needs to find that comfortable balance. And and uh, I talked with him yesterday about that. I know Coleman's becoming an important piece in general with his energy, but when you look at a, a like size guy at the four and Diabate, how important is he in this particular game? Huge, huge. And and Coleman's Coleman's a guy that we can do different things with. Um, you know, like I said, I mean, his, his passing, his, his ability to drive the basketball, uh, you know, he's, he's finally learned a two-foot jump stop. That worked out great for him in the Ohio State game and, and spray it, and he got fouled. And, uh, but, you know, defensively, he's, he's a guy that, uh, you know, the shot EJ hit was special. I mean, there's, there's not five guys in college basketball making that shot over a 6'10 guy with lean and fadeaway. And, uh, uh, that was that was elite defense on his part, just better offense. Thanks. Hey, Brad, you're clearly frustrated on Thursday. Have you chatted with anybody at the Big Ten about officiating in that game or, or a bigger discussion about it? I'm I lost all that. I didn't hear any anything about you, you were obviously frustrated on Thursday. Have you talked with anybody in the Big Ten about officiating either in that game or a larger discussion about it here in yes. the last few days? Yes, I'll leave it with between me and the office. Gotcha. If I could one more, you talked about, I mean, having just a couple of curveballs in your pocket right now, be it RJ when he's back or, or Coleman or Luke. Well, it's, it's kind of late to have that. I mean, what kind of advantage does that give you or, or maybe even challenges to work some of those curveballs into what you guys have going now? I didn't qu quite catch all of that. I don't know if it's my signal or yours. I mean, uh, you talked about having some curveballs on set or on Thursday night, be it Coleman or RJ when he's yeah. back to try to work those in now. I mean, I would imagine there's both some advantages, but also maybe some challenges and and kind of figuring that out. Yeah, you double down on what you do really, really well. You want to keep doing those things, uh, but but it's it's you know I I go back to you know some of my earlier days you know at SFA. I mean you know having having a wrinkle, um, you know you know, last year and evaluating last year, you know, we didn't play in the short pocket enough. We were, you know, and that was, that was more limited because of Georgie and, and, and Kofi's abilities and what we were committed to and, and just rolling all the time. Coleman gives us that, you know, RJ gives us some, some ability to play open. You, you, you put, put Corbello in an open court, um, you know, and, and, and those are all things that uh, uh, can be very positive for us as we move down the stretch and and stuff we've been uh, working on in practice. Thank you, Brad. Brad, you you mentioned Kofi, uh, but is there a way to get him to play meaner in a sense? And I don't I don't mean like hurting somebody, but in a sense, bigger people like him tend to play subconsciously like I'm going to hurt somebody and kind of get him out of that mentality. And you asked, dude, I like the shots he took. Yeah, but I would have preferred he dunked the ball a little bit more instead of lay it up. Is that a conversation yeah. that's happened? Matt, you, you get said my conversation. That's what the hell I told him. Um, you know, it's it's there. There's a there's a, when you get beat on. I I can't even imagine. I mean, there is a there is a play where EJ Liddell is sitting on his head, literally sitting on his head. 
and he is getting his arms broke at the at the elbows, getting crushed on a on a smackdown, and there's no call. And at some point, when is when is you know, I mean, I mean, he he literally says it all the time. I feel like I could kill somebody every time if I just pivot. And and yet, you know, he makes one pivot the other night, and again, it was an offensive foul. Uh, it, it's so hard to even tell him what to do. The main thing I, we've tried to stress with Kofi for three years is just maintain your composure, and and don't don't let that happen. And and yeah. You know, do you need do you need to play angry? Probably, uh, probably a little more. Um, I, I don't know. I don't know. I, I'm at a loss. I don't know what to tell him. And uh, uh, you know, when we get it called like it was last night or the other night, where there's you know he's bringing the he brought the ball down. Some of them were probably clean, but um, you know, some of those were just not. And uh, and and he's got to play more you know, in a more violent way. Thanks, Brad. Coach, you talked about uh, striking a balance with Trent. Seems like a pretty big thing with the Curbelo as well. Um, how, how do you balance Andre's ability to go get a bucket, you know, with the ball in his hands, with the need to move the ball and operate within the structure of the offense? Bello was terrific the other night. He was terrific. He played great. Um, and again, it's, 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 you know, a lot of it is, is goes back to a little bit of what we did with IO, you know, and it's, and it's, you know, Ion go, could go get a shot anytime he wanted. All we had to do is put him in a ball screen. You know, Corbello can go make a play anytime we want. All we have to do is put him in a ball screen. We have to choose, you know, when to do that. The coverages that we see from other teams uh, determine that. And you can't go multiple, multiple possessions without, uh, other guys touching the ball and and that can happen very easily when you start ball screening all the time and 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 if if uh, uh you know that's that's the challenge so you've you've got a you've got ball screens you've got continuity you've got mass movement and and we run all of those things uh so that everybody can stay involved and uh, yet you've got a guy with a great gift and in, in Curbelo who can go get one anytime and get in the paint every time and and uh you know, it's based basically he makes the right reads most every single time. One more quick one, if I could. What you what you think of the, watching the tape? What do you think of uh, Luke Goody's play against them? Um... Great, 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 terrific. Tough as tough as nails. Chased balls. Had a three go in and out. Um, gritty. You know, he's got a great knack of chasing the basketball. We need his rebounding. Uh, he played great defense, a couple of possessions on when he was matched up on EJ. Uh, terrific, 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 terrific. A plus. Thank you. Brad, if I could... Yeah, I guess kind of a different angle here. I know you always appreciate the Orange Crush's support and them making noise and everything, but Coach Holman said something after the game about things that were being said at one or two of his players, and EJ Liddell sent out a tweet yesterday. Is there kind of an importance of them striking a balance with not crossing a line with things that are said or not said. Yeah. I, I didn't know anything about that until obviously there was stuff said, um, you know, I, I think that, that it's, it's obviously a, a, a small percentage. We've got a great, great home court. Um, the, the one thing I you know personally don't do is ever comment about another person's crowd. I think that, We've got great fans, and 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 we want to be, um, we we want to be as 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 classy as classy can be, and still be the best fan base in 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 the country. And if if one or two, or a small percentage, carried that across, that's not us. That's not who we want to be. It's not what we're about. Um, but, um, you know, we've got the best fans in the country. I say that all the time. And, and uh, uh, you know, he's, he's a terrific player. And if something was said, you know, my apologies. I didn't know about it. Uh, and, um, but, um, you know, I, again, you know, I, I, don't, I don't comment on anybody else's either. So I'm a pretty easy target. Brad, if I could just kind of a random one here, and I know you have three guys in, in the 22 class, but Ty's obviously in state and 
and they're making a run here a little bit in the postseason. I'm sure you've seen stat lines in game film. What have your impressions been of what you've seen out of him this year? Oh, pretty good. I don't, what is there not to like? There's not. There's nothing not to like. He is uh, do it all. He's um, he's one of the best. I think he's one of the best players in the country. I think he's one of the most ready players in the country. Uh, physically, uh, passes it, IQ, athletically, great, great body. Um, yeah, and he's he's been pretty good. Makes me smile. Thanks, Brad. All right, Coach. Thank you so much for uh, your time this morning, and then we'll hold on until Derek gets uh, plumb on.